Good evening. First tonight, East Midlands today can reveal that a police force is catching gun runners and kidnappers by paying them in Bitcoin. We've been speaking to Derbyshire's Chief Constable Peter Goodman, who's the national police lead on cybercrime. The new so-called cryptocurrencies are increasingly popular with legitimate investors. But Mr Goodman says more criminals are using them too because they can't be traced through the banks. This report from our social affairs correspondent, Jeremy Ball. They say money makes the world go round and this is the currency most of us use. But more and more people are converting pounds and pence into new digital currencies like Bitcoin. And just look at this, at this news agents in Leicester, there's even a machine where you can change it automatically. You touch the screen to start and press the buy option. Kappel installed this ATM after he made money on Bitcoin. Investors who know how to play the markets can make a fortune on it. You press request, you scan it straight onto the machine. But there's a prominent warning about scammers too. One woman who came here lost £3,000. They actually rang this lady and they said that she didn't pay enough tax and she put a large amount of money inside the machine. She was in tears. When I got here and explained to her the actual process of what Bitcoins is, she was under the impression that she was on the phone to the HMRC and then she was under the impression she spoke to Mr Bitcoin himself and it doesn't exist. Um, so she got scammed very, very badly. So how does Bitcoin work? It's one of several so-called cryptocurrencies, essentially a string of computer code that you can buy and sell online. Its value fluctuates sharply, that's why it's used by legitimate investors. But because it's not part of the banking system, those transactions are anonymous and harder to trace. That makes it popular with criminals too. Your old East End bank robbers probably don't use cryptocurrency but your new cyber criminals, your new extorters. The majority of drug dealing doesn't take place on a street corner anymore where you meet the shady drug dealer and you pay £20 for your hit of whatever you want. The majority of it takes place through the dark web using cryptocurrency and the stuff delivered to your house. When we look at the transactions, the vast majority of them are not involved in criminality. And it's a new battleground for detectives like Mick Donegan now they're using cryptocurrencies too as part of new covert techniques to gather intelligence and evidence. People think that cryptocurrency transactions are completely anonymous and untraceable. That isn't true. We've used them in traditional kidnap cases, we've used them in extortion cases. We've uh, paid for firearms uh, through Bitcoin to make sure that they don't enter the streets of Derbyshire and we can keep Derbyshire safe. We've also used Bitcoin to buy drugs as part of our evidential and prosecutional process. This is no longer kind of a Cinderella sport for us. And it's not going away. Capil says Bitcoin's already bringing extra business to his shop here in Belgrave. And he thinks that cryptocurrencies could eventually replace hard cash. Thank you. Now Jeremy's here in the studio. I mean, clearly a lot of money at stake here. But isn't all of this taking detectives away from the traditional role of protecting people on the streets? Well, it's a big change, certainly, but the police say, look, this all goes hand in hand. You heard Peter Goodman there uh, talking about taking guns off the streets. A lot of violence is linked to drug dealing, of course, and that drug money sometimes gets laundered through those Bitcoin cash machines. And he also said they've dealt with kidnappings where someone's life's at risk, where uh, they're ordered by a criminal overseas, where the ransom then gets paid into a Bitcoin account in yet another country. So really, really complex stuff here. Mm. I guess a lot of us find this whole thing baffling, including me. <laughs> are, are we going to see more of this thing? Yeah, the chief constable uh, certainly thinks we are. And he likens the growth in cryptocurrencies a little bit uh, to the, the growth in electric cars, where you, you had a few early adopters. Gradually, they're becoming more and more routine. And of course, some investors have made huge amounts of money on Bitcoin. You really do need to do your research, though. We had a look this afternoon, and the value has actually plummeted since last Christmas, if you look back over the last few months or so. And if you do ever get asked to pay for anything in Bitcoin, well, Peter Goodman says you really need to ask some serious questions.